All right, in this video, we'll take a look at how to use Qt Designer with PyQt6. Qt Designer is a drag and drop interface that allows us to convert the interface that we have created to code, making it quicker to make designs and adjustments to our user interfaces in PyQt6. To start, there are a few ways of installing Qt Designer. I'll first show perhaps the most convenient and easiest way of doing it, which is to just go to this link and download the installer based on your operating system. Once it has been installed, you can go through the installer and it should run as expected. Now the official way of installing it would be to install it as a Python package but this is only possible if you are using version 3.9 of Python or lower. You can check the version of Python that you are currently running by using the command python dash dash version in a terminal or command prompt. If you are running version 3.10 of Python, you would have to use either the previous method or install version 3.9 of Python to continue. Once that's done, you'll need to run the command pip install qt6-tools. This installs a few tools that can help you to use PyQt6. In this case, we are just trying to use Qt Designer. I'm using Py 3.9 to specify the version of Python to install the package with, since I also have 3.10 installed. Once you have installed the package, you then need to go to the folder where Python is installed in. In my case, this is under my user, under app data, under local, and under programs. Once you are inside the Python folder, you then need to go into lib. Site packages. Qt6 applications. Qt. And then bin. And within the bin folder, you should be able to find a designer.exe file. That is the Qt designer file. Since this is a rather tedious way of having to open the application every time, it is probably better to make a shortcut of this application and place it on your desktop. Alright, now once we have the Qt designer application installed, we can create our first design. We will first check the main window option. This is equivalent to creating a QMain window when we are writing it in code. Just to give a quick overview of Qt Designer, on the left hand side, we have all the possible widgets we can add. On the right hand side, we have a few panels. The first shows the entire layout of our application and all of the widgets that we have added and how they are structured. The second panel shows the properties of the currently selected widget or window. Think of this as using the methods to change certain parts of our widget or window. Only now, we can do it visually. I will change the window title as an example. From here, we can drag widgets from the left panel onto our window. I'll drag over a label and a button. To set the layout of the entire window, we first need to select the central widget at the top right hand corner. We can then select a layout for the central widget at this top toolbar. In my case, I'll select the QVBox layout as an example. And as we can see, our widgets have been vertically laid out. Note that this process is similar to if we were setting a central widget and setting its layout in code. From here, we can also change the text of the label or button by double-clicking it and entering the text. We can also go to the Properties panel with the widget selected and change things such as the maximum size of the label. If you wanted to change the properties of the main window, you will first need to select the main window in the top right-hand panel and then change its properties such as the minimum size of the main window. If we wanted to remove the layout, 
we can also click the central widget first and then click this icon to break the layout this will remove our layout if you are wondering why we are using layouts here instead of just adding the widgets i've explained the importance and the differences between all the different layouts in my previous video now that we have a basic idea of how to work with qt designer we'll work on creating a simple to do this list application we will first delete our previous widgets to start we will drag in a label for the top a list widget which we will use to display the different tasks a line widget for the user to enter their tasks and a button to add it to the list widget we will place the widgets in roughly the areas that we want them to be shown at to achieve the layout we want we can use the grid layout we will first select the central widget at the top right hand corner and click the grid layout if your label or your widget doesn't appear in the correct column or doesn't have the correct column span you can drag them across or move them to indicate to the application which row or column it should appear at i will now also change the window title of my application before we do this make sure you have the main window selected at the top right hand window first before searching for it and changing the property I will also horizontally align my text label and I will also change its font size Once that's done, I will change the text of the button and I will also set a placeholder for the line added Before we continue, I will also change the font of our list widget to size 12 This is so that our task will appear larger later on Although it is not visible right now since we haven't added anything to our list widget Now that we are about done with our design, we can preview it to make sure everything looks as expected before we convert it to code Although we can still make changes later on we can preview it by going to form and then to preview to convert the layout to code we first need to save the file our name mine as design and the file extension is .ui make sure to save it to a location that you can easily navigate to later on I'll save mine to my downloads folder Within the command prompt, we will need to change the directory to the directory of where we saved the designer file to. In my case, since I have saved it under my downloads directory, I will use the cd command followed by downloads. This means change the current directory I am referring to to the downloads directory. We will then convert it by using the command which is pyuic6 designui o designpy If that doesn't work or if there's an error when you are using that command, try using python-m pyqt6.uic.pyuic designui o designpy and in both of these commands, designer.ui is the file that we have saved when working with Qt Designer, and designer.py is the file we want to save the converted code to. Now, if we open the designer.py file, we can see the code that represents the layout that we have made. Before we continue, it's probably better to move this designer.py file to a directory where you store your Python projects. 
for me I'll just move it to my documents and to a separate folder to use the code that has been generated we'll first create a new file I'll name this main.py this file will be used to add functionality to our application while the designer.py file will be used for the layout of our application Within this new file, I'll first import the class that has been created in the designer file, which is UI underscore main window. I will also import QMain window and Q application from PyQt6.qt widgets. Next, I'll create a window class like we have done for the previous tutorial. Note that we are working with multiple inheritance here, where we inherit from both Qmin window to create our window and the UI underscore main window class to create our layout. I won't go into too much details of how multiple inheritance works here, since this is a separate topic. But when we use the super function here and initialize the object it is referring to, we are initializing the QMain window object. We then need to use self.setupUI, which is a method that has already been defined in our designer.py file. Since this setupUI method expects a main window object as the second argument, we need to pass in self as a parameter. And within this setup UI method, we can see that this main window object is used to, for example, set the minimum size, like how we would normally do when we are writing the layout ourselves using code. If we then create a new application, an instance of our window, as well as show it and execute our application like we normally do with and we launch the application, we can see that we have the same application that we have designed in Qt Designer. Let's first add a simple event handler, a slot to the button to print something to the terminal when it has been clicked. We first need to find out what attribute name the push button is. In this case, if we go to the designer.py file, we can see it is self.pushButton. In fact, we can actually change this name within Qt Designer. It is actually under object name in Qt Designer. So now we can go back to our main.py file and we can write self.pushbutton.clicked, which is the signal that we are listening to, and we can connect it to an event handler. In this case, the event handler is just going to print something to the terminal. We can then connect the signal to this event handler using the connect method like we have done in the previous tutorial. If we run the application and test it, we can see that every time the button has been clicked, something is printed to the terminal. Now, instead of printing something to the terminal, we want to add whatever the user has entered in the line edit to the list widget. To do this, we will first receive the value of the line edit widget and assign it to a variable. Note that the name of our line edit widget, if you have not changed it, should be self.lineEdit. We'll then use a simple if check to ensure that the list widget isn't empty. If it isn't, we'll add it to the list widget. using the add item method that is available on all list widgets. If we run the application and test it, we can see that once the user has clicked on the button, their task or whatever they have entered on the line added widget has been added to the list widget. To improve on this application, we should also probably clear the line edit widget once the user has added a new task. 
we can do this by using self.line and the set hex and setting it to an empty string. This will reset the line edit widget once the user has successfully added a new task. If you are interested in making a pop-up to indicate to the user if the action is successful or not, we will take a look at how to do it in the next video. Now that we are familiar with Qt Designer and how to use it, I'll go over a few extra tips that might be useful to you if you are using it. If we want to select multiple items, we can either drag over both of them or click on one of them and hold down Ctrl and select the rest. If we want to undo an action, we can use Ctrl Z. Lastly, if we want to add an image, such as if we wanted to add a pix map to a label like we did in the first episode, we first need to select the label and then change its pix map property. To do this, we need to click the drop down menu and click select from file. This allows us to add the image file. Now, once the file has been converted to code, if we wanted to move the Python file, we need to make sure to move the image file together as well, or change the file path in the Python file, since it uses the relative file path. Alright, that is about it for this video. In the next one, we'll go over how to make pop-up windows in our application. If this video has helped you or if you have enjoyed it, please consider liking and possibly subscribing as well to help my channel grow.